Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the REC Podcast, brought to you by REC Comics and Collectibles. I'm your host, Roman Chavez, and with me as always... Eric Icarus. Eric! What's up, man? It's cold. It's cold. You can find us on the gram at REC Podcast. You can follow myself at Roman REC Podcast. You can follow the shop at REC Comics, and you can follow the man himself... Eric J. Wielden underscore Esquire for all your legal needs. The face... Of R.A.C. Comics, Jesus. as he's known oh, in the God. in the streets. Space Eric Dactyl. Eric Dactyl, yeah, man, you gotta Icarus. get a you gotta get a lot of nicknames in there. Nicknames you did not choose. I okay, did, I, well, uh, yeah, it's true. <laughs> I mean, Icarus, I guess I you chose a little one. bit. <laughs> yeah, I guess you, I guess you chose that a bit. Uh, how are you doing this week, buddy? Uh, I'm doing okay, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. You know, just uh, trying to. It's just really cold. I Jack hate Frost it. nipping at your nose. Yeah, a bit. Man. yeah, baby, it's cold outside. Baby, it is cold. You know that they're trying to cancel that song, dude. I didn't know that, but you know what? I, I've I don't know the song other than baby, you know, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, leave it's that It's a guy part. trying to, he's being really forceful. Oh, yeah, to, like you should come inside. Stay. Yeah, it's cold you, out you there. You gotta leave, baby. Come That's on, right. Stay, I forgot. Well, it's cold. It's, you know, it's just stay with me, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was a different time. It was a different time. <laughs> Uh, who sang that? Do you know? Uh, I have no it's not idea. Bing Crosby. It's been covered like so many yeah. times. So who Bing knows? Crosby. You know? Yeah, it was Bing Crosby. <laughs> oh man, dude, I'm beat today, man. You are, man. Yeah, I did. I did a lot of work here in the He's shop. Been working, man. Yeah, st- stuff you guys won't get to see though, unfortunately. But stuff behind the scenes. That stuff's important as well. Um, We had, uh, you know, it's been a kind of a light week in the news, but something that was kind of interesting that that, that kind of went under the radar, at least for you and I, I think, Mm. was uh, there was some, you know, Craven the Hunter movie news. Um, They talked about doing this solo film, which, okay. Um, Pretty obscure Spider-Man villain. It's just. It, I mean, if you're a fan, you're gonna know him. Yeah. But you know, he's he's not a venom. Yeah. He's not a goblin. Yeah. Either goblin. <laughs> so yeah, Sergey Kravinov is a a uh, guy that 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 that's you know background has changed a few times. He's been this kind of uh, uh, adventurer slash uh, you know uh, what, what do they call it like a biologist right. or you know yeah. concerned or uh, you know he's uh, like a God I don't contra. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of, of what the if if you were studying an, a, an endangered animal, you would hire Sergei yeah. to, to like a uh, like a Sherpa, but not a Sherpa, uh, right? You right. know, so, like somebody that takes you through, too. yeah, somebody takes you through on safaris and stuff like that. Yeah, like if you want to kill like a white tiger, he's the guy yeah. you hired to like, you yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, he knows, and 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 he will kill it with his hands because yeah, yeah, yeah. he does feel there's honor in that. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, but you know, a very interesting uh, Spider-Man villain where you have. Uh, you know, wanting to hunt Spider-Man because he sees him as, you know, the most dangerous game <laughs> when it's like, why don't you hunt the Hulk and we'll talk. I'll, although, don't get me wrong, yeah, catching Spider-Man, Spider-Man's tough. Yeah, that's hard, catching man. Catching Spider-Man's tough. And the thing is, I think a lot of people, like, in the comic book world, like, they don't really understand, like, what what uh, Spider-Man's powers are. Sure. And they don't understand, like, how strong it makes him, how fast it makes right, him. Right, right. And these, uh, you know, Sergei is just a guy who... He's got a little bit of. He took a, some herbal stuff yeah, from Africa. Yeah, he's got a little juice to him, him, but he's not on Spider-Man's level. No, not at all. Not but even he, Cap's level. But he is a fantastic hunter. You right. know, doesn't rival Wolverine. No. But if you were a human, right. that could track people, that the best Craven's your guy. Right, right. He's like Steve Irwin, but like crazy. Crazy Steve Irwin, man. Just think yeah. about that. That sounds like a great movie. Stay away movie. from the Stingrays. Stay away. Yeah, yeah. Craven doesn't mess around in the ocean. Isn't, okay? there, isn't there a, a superhero named Stingray? There is. <laughs> it's just kryptonite. That to me, oh, I can't believe he got taken out by that fruity fish. I know, man. <laughs> and then his son got like uh, got like chased down by something the other day. It's like, you guys got to quit messing with animals, all right? Oh, yeah. Quit messing around. Now, to be fair, they're trying to, you know, protect and, sure. and, and, and but still. Don't 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 f- look for things that can hunt you. Yeah, you right? hear that, Craven? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they cast um, they cast uh, Aaron uh, something Johnson. Yeah, as Aaron uh, Taylor Johnson as uh, chameleon. Oh wait, I'm talking about chameleon. Chameleon. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, I don't know who the guy they cast. Is yeah. Like. They. Yeah. And honestly, even even having. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson as as uh, uh, the chameleon or as Craven is, it's okay, I guess. I mean, I mean he, he I'm just, it. I, I guess. Chameleon's interesting because they they ended up years later making him kind of uh, Craven's half brother. 
Oh, so yeah, they have they have like uh, you okay. know. Yeah, so I they, was wondering, so what, that's kind of odd, but whatever. But yeah, now, okay, that makes a little yeah, sense. Yeah, okay. they've they've done some some ladder craven. Um, uh, hunt style issues where you think it was Craven and it ended up being, you know, Chameleon the whole time. So, you know, the little... Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. Chameleon's thing is he's just a great actor. Yeah, he's a great actor. The he, master disguise kind yeah. of thing, Avi, Avi Toast. Which, which yeah. does make for, for some, for, for interesting storytelling if, you, if you're telling a Nick Fury story, if you're telling, sure. if you're telling a Blackwood... But I, I never ever understood him as a spider-man no. villain mm. and uh yeah the 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 knowledge of this is just news out there right, uh morbius right. you know uh, they're they're saying that that there might be a link between morbius and uh the craven movie I mean, it has to be at this point you know maybe they introduce him the movie's not coming out till 2023 it's so, gonna be a hot minute before we get it so, so we so. still got some time before we start figuring stuff out but you know it was uh some some spider-man adjacent news yeah um i watched a movie this what week watch? i watched uh, something that that had i mean took three years to come out um and it was the king's man which was a, a prequel to the Kingsman uh, uh, franchise from Matthew Vaughn, uh, you know, scripted, you know, based off of the comic Secret Service by Mark Millar, mm-hmm. Mark Miller, mm-hmm. um, on the, oh man, it might have been on the Icon imprint, I can't recall, but, um, you know, already had two awesome movies that were super fun, a little out there, but but really interesting. This movie is very different. Okay. I think you will like it since you haven't seen it yet, my right. yet yourself. Mm-hmm. I don't want to spoil everything, but it takes place during a time. So again, it's prequel and a little bit of spoilers, but not too much because I don't want to spoil it for Eric either. But it does take place during World War One. Okay, which we talked about on the show. I think is 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 definitely something that um, is not done enough no. in the uh, in the film aspect. Uh, Wonder Woman, you know, went that route yes, with the yeah, first uh-huh, film, uh-huh. which I'm glad because. The, obviously, the further we get away from that that time in, in American history, um, the the less is is kind of remembered by sure, that by the sure. masses, and you know it doesn't get it does doesn't have it doesn't have the sex appeal that uh, World War Two no, has. No, it doesn't. And uh, but no, it, it was really good. I love revisionist history mm-hmm. type things. Sure, sure. And this has a ton of that where we're seeing, um, you know, the the uh, uh, the heads of you know Russia, uh-huh. Germany. And and England, uh, we're seeing their kind of link. Something that they did that was brilliant, and 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 I don't think it's going to get enough love. Is the same actor plays all three kings. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. And, you know, because cool. historically okay. they are cousins, right? So yes. they are. So he is playing the Russian, right? Uh, right. You know, the oligarchs and the uh, the uh, you know Germany, all of that, and it's it's just fascinating to see him do that, to see them kind of go that route. Did um, they bring up? Uh, Archduke Ferdinand. Of course, that Got is. To. Yeah, so you know, as a you know, some of that revisionist history, they work it into, uh, you know, the assassination of, of of the Archduke Ferdinand was put together by this outside organization. Right. You know. Um, it's got great uh, mystery invo- uh, involved with it. A fantastic actors. Our boy, Jaiman yes. Hansu, uh, is in it. Been a while since we had seen him in, in, in something comic booky, so it was nice to to get him back in there. Uh, uh, Ralph uh, R- R- Ralph Fiennes, Voldemort. I, I always forget how to say his, <laughs> his first name. He was, uh, you know, the, the lead in the story. Takes tons of interesting turns. Uh, we get a really fun uh, Rasputin. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, in I there. can dig it. Okay. And you'll you'll dig it. And, and, and my wife's the one who made me – and she didn't make me, but she had watched this before so me. She's going to watch this. She's going to watch it, boy. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, it was, it was really, really good. And there's an excellent – uh, Rasputin scene where he's like doing a great like knife fight, mm. but like doing it's like Russian dancing. Oh, and, that's kind of uh, cool. But it, it's it's hokey and fun at the same time. Sure, it's it's very very good. Does that mesh with the tone of the movie? Very much so. Okay, very okay. much so. The only thing I will say, my big uh, my my only gripe with it is that it really doesn't feel like a Kingsman. It, it feels like a really cool standalone mm-hmm. movie, mm-hmm. but... Uh, it doesn't necessarily feel like it fits with it? Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, you know, the, the Kingsman, again, based based off the Secret Service mm-hmm. uh, from, from, from Mark Millar, and, uh, you know, it's only 
I think it's only six issues. And then they ended up doing kind of a quasi sequel when the second movie came out, right, which was right. heavily based on the movie versions as opposed to the uh, uh, comic book versions. And then this doesn't have a comic to to accompany it. So honestly, like it feels very different. Okay. Um, not not in a negative way. It's sure. just that. You don't need to have the two. Okay. Um, so this could have been com- something completely different. It really could have been something completely different. Uh, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I said, that, that it, it's in the vein. Uh, Matthew Vaughn feels like um, what, you know, like that next stage of Guy Ritchie. Ooh. You know, okay. like he's the next generation sure, of, sure, of, of sure. Guy Ritchie type. type okay. uh, you know, I can, I can definitely uses see that. a lot of the same people in his movies. Right. Um, you know, always has that 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 heavily British bend. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, solid solid movie. Uh, you know, and, and it's on HBO Max right now, so it's definitely uh, worth a watch for you guys. Cool, man. Yeah. Okay, I definitely get it because I like the other one. Yeah, so. yeah. Did you watch both or did you just watch? The first I only one? saw the first one. I heard the second one's pretty good. The second one is really good. Is it better second. than the first? I don't think it's better, but it's a great companion. Okay. Yeah, it's a really great companion. I'll check it out. Uh, I think I'll, I'll watch them. I guess I don't really need to see... You don't. Yeah, you can watch, watch them separately yeah. and, and, and honestly have no problems with it. Okay. Um, I mean, like, the end of this really does, like, okay, and this is why we'll be the King's Men and da-da-da-da, but... Uh, <laughs> But it, it was it was really good, fun action, right. great actors, and uh, and and very much worth your time. Okay, there you go. Uh, the big in this week, though, the thing that uh, uh, you know, as we're talking about HBO Max, was finally not finally, but we did have the season finale of Peacemaker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, James Gunn's Peacemaker with John Cena uh, had this very very fun. What what were we at? Eight, eight or nine episodes. Eight, eight. Uh, so eight episodes. Uh, each week was super fun, and it finally culminated in this in this very out there storyline. Did uh, not see it going this way, and I was I loved it. Yeah, bravo. Yeah, it's great. Solid, it's great. solid show. I, I I couldn't wait for it every week. Mm-hmm. It didn't have the same um, draw to me as the Marvel stuff because often I would be like, tell my wife we got to watch it Wednesday. We got to watch right, it. Da, da, da. Right. The wife and I we've been catching them these uh, peacemakers. Um, a few days after the fact. So, right, right. Yeah, it's been a it's been a, a wild ride. I I didn't think that this was what the show it was going to be. Spoilers, kids. It was going to be kind of an alien invasion sh- show per yeah, se. I didn't see it going that way. Uh, and, and I was okay with it. Yeah, it, it was. It was. It was almost dealing with the fallout from Suicide Squad. In yeah, a, in a weird way. Just more of that. Uh, I loved them fleshing out uh, Peacemaker more. Chris right. Smith as this uh, uh, guy who doesn't want to kill for no reason. You know, like he wanted to uh, make every death meaningful since sure. you know since the death of his brother, and that's why he uses kind of peace as an excuse. But he doesn't really want to hurt anybody who really doesn't deserve it. Right. Right. Well, um, I mean, the brother thing was kind of funny because if you you know if you watched it, you know he killed him in a. Fist fight. Yeah, yeah. Because the dad would make them fight for his uh, enjoyment, and the dad gets all mad when he yeah. kills him, and he just kind of holds it over his head. I got a lot of the uh, walk the line vibes. The yeah, wrong key the dad. wrong key. Oh my god, it did feel like <laughs> walk the line a lot. You know, Robert Patrick's, uh, you know, uh, white dragon character as, as, as Peacemaker's dad. Um, I thought he was really going to steal the show, but he did a good job of just like doing his thing, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. not being too much because you really could have uh, pulled the, uh, they essentially had two villains in the season yes, and you know, they finished one the week prior and then they finished, you know, kind of the, the butterfly right, storyline yeah. the, yeah. the, 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 the last week and um, Robert Patrick added some interesting things, gave it some some more chops. He's got to be wearing like a like a, a stuffed like stomach, right? Got That's it, not right. his stomach, no, there's is no it? Way he's that I, don't, big. I don't think he's. It no. just looks weird on no, him. It does because it's like his butt. He had, his butt isn't big. Yeah, it's yeah. Just like this, like <laughs> you know, he did an excellent job of making you hate him, but not hate Robert Patrick. You know, he's playing a, a white supremacist right, leader, right. Uh, which I actually think they could have stretched out a tad bit more, a little but bit more, but I, maybe season two because. I yeah, didn't yeah, a think that mild they spoiler. Yeah. He's he's dead, obviously. Yes. Yeah. He's just haunting Chris yeah. or Peacemaker. Yeah, and I like the scene at the end. I did with too. Him, with with uh, him and um, uh, Peacemaker still haunting him. Yeah, but yeah. it seems like he's come to terms with it. Yes, you know. Um, but I think there can be a lot more done with it because you know he's kind of a ghost. Yeah. For, I don't, not really, but you know he's he's in his brain. Yeah. In his mind. 
So we could, you know, there's a, you know, I don't know that last thing, that last shot was kind of stupid. Uh, what do you mean? You know what I'm talking about? The bald eagle. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I just like eagly, man. I just like eagly. Such a great uh, uh, addition to the character. They just had his first appearance in Strange Love Adventures in the DC uh, one shot a few weeks ago. Uh, the first appearance of eagly, bro. <laughs> You know, look, man, if you don't want to believe in miracles, that's on you. All right. That's on you. Oh, I think. Were you quoting Blade Runner at me now? Yeah. (laughs) Because you'll never see a miracle. (laughs) Oh, man. The show's been great. Yeah, it's Um, it's good. No, I I liked it better than um, Falcon Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah. I liked it better than Hawkeye. I did. I really did. It's, you know, it gives it the edge to me. And and I will agree with you. Uh, is I, I like just that song. You just do you, yeah. <laughs> do you really want to taste it from Wigwam? Like it just it. I hope I hope that they that obviously they're gonna change the routine since some of those people are no longer involved. Uh, but I hope that they do another dance number. Sure. I hope they keep that song because that song just gets me. It's amped. cool. I it's need cool. to put it on like a workout mix, and I really think it'll, well, yeah, it'll get me going. I think they threw in uh, Steel Panther too. Oh yeah. yeah oh yeah. It's good. Good. I can't remember the name of the song, but I'm like, okay, I get down a little Steel Panther. I mean, the, you know, James Gunn, the only person he might be the best person with music in film right now, um, next to Tarantino. They use music very, very well. Yeah, even Scorsese to to an extent. Tarantino, yeah, but Tarantino, he 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 shows you that like that like old classic, you know, like his. I don't think a lot of these the songs fully actually go with the sh- with the movie with 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 uh, uh, James Gunn, but like. They're fun. I don't know. They, they do put me in a, in an interesting mood. Right. Well, they, you know, the, I feel like the music he chooses, you know, affects the mood that you're having for the scene. It does. You know, even if you're you're, it's like almost like some scenes are juxtaposed with ultra violence, but you're giving us a kind of a goofy song. And so and, it's almost like you're not taking the violence overtly serious yeah. because they, neither are the characters. Sure, they don't see the violence as being. Something really, fun, you know, final. It's, yeah. it's kind of fun. It's like a dance to them almost. Dude, when Leota went in there and she was shooting the butterflies, <laughs> and she just like kind of like, yeah, you know, so oh my awesome, god, dude. it was so. Funny. That's what I'm saying. You get. I really, re- aside from Wandavision, this this thing is better than all the other Marvel shows, in my opinion. DC just just keep doing this, man. We, yeah, you know, not to the T, but you know, just. Give it to somebody super creative and, and kind of just and leave them alone. Yeah, yeah leave, leave him alone. alone. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, Gunn has been wildly vocal about the fact that they just left him alone. Right, right. And I mean, it had the highest view of anything first day on HBO Max. Right. So you know, they're obviously doing something right. Totally. Oh yeah, yeah. So maybe they can. You know, um, I, we 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 would be stupid if we didn't bring up the JLA appearance. <laughs> what did you think? So, didn't like you said, it. spoilers. Didn't need it. Didn't need it. Um, interesting how there was no Batman and no Cyborg for sure. Well, I mean, the Cyborg, I get, you know, they're, uh, the actor, I always forget his name. He's had a Ray lot Fisher. of problems. With Ray DC. Fisher. Ray Fisher. He's yeah. had a lot of problems with DC. Mm-hmm. So I, I get that. Batman, I mean, they're going to have, they, but, they, they've got, which Batman are they going to use? Yeah, exactly. Affleck, um, Robert Battinson, uh, yeah. Keaton. Like, well, I mean, just use the use the ones that 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 we're familiar with right now. So I guess that would have been Batfleck. Yeah, yeah. Now, but I mean, you know, uh, Wonder Woman and Superman in were shadows. were in the shadows. You could have done the same Which thing I there. Thought that was cool. They did that. It, that was it, fine. It works, and it was cool that uh, Ezra Miller and um, um, Hot Momoa, Man yeah. Momoa, Hot, Hot Momoa were there. So. Uh, I, I do he, like that. He F's fish, man. Yeah, he F's fish. And you know what? It, I thought it was really cool they showed up for that just to just to kind of do a little uh, – Fan service. Fan service. And keep it in continuity. It, yeah, kept things in continuity. We got to hear Jason Momoa talk. We got to see Ezra Miller. Yeah, which is great because I think they both have movies coming out. They do. Really, really soon. That's so the only um, thing that we know has a trajectory right now. Right, so right. I don't think it was necessary at all. But No, but it, I now that I'm talking about it, I kind of dug it. It was fun. It was fun. I yeah, kind of dug it. I, I didn't dislike it. I think I, think, I would have been okay if they just had Ezra Miller and, yeah. and Jason Momoa. Yeah. You didn't really – we didn't need – if you're not going to give us Henry Cavill or Gal Gadot, then yeah. just leave him out. Just uh, give us the just give them those two, you know. One, one of the things that really impressed me about this this uh, season finale, and to our point earlier, mm-hmm. I think it just got renewed for season two. Yes, so uh-huh. I think they were like, "Well, we might not be able to do the Red White Dragon story later, so let's just get it done." Just wrap now. it up. But there's other avenues you can take with it. It just yeah. drives me nuts that Mern is gone because I loved that actor. I thought he was so cool, and he's got a 
interesting name, and I don't know how to say it, but <laughs> uh, he's a uh, rumor is that he's going to be the high evolutionary in uh, James Gunn's uh, Guardians, Guardians 3, which I, I see, totally down for it. I can see it. Totally down for yeah, it. I can see it. But the thing that really impressed me was that there's a moment in the uh, episode where it gets ridiculously preachy. Very <laughs> preachy. Very everything that you talk about. I know what you're talking being, about. <laughs> being woke, being, you know, the, the things that, that are very annoying about the left. Um, it does that. Uh, you know, it, it it makes its point. James Gunn makes his point, sure, and then set and then gives us a middle finger at the same time as well, which is why it worked. Right, which is right, why right, it right, actually right, right. absolutely worked. We find out that the butterflies, uh, that their planet had, uh, you know, they had not, they had ignored climate change yeah, and, so just, and all of these things. So they basically did to their planet what we are right, doing to ours. Yeah, and they're trying to like help us by taking it out of our hands. Right, right. right. By trying to save us by any means necessary. Sure. And even if that means eradicating us. <laughs> and, and not even eradicating us, just taking us over. Like, hey, you guys and need that's to. Fine. Not, yeah. So they want to keep the planet right. And Peacemaker's like, oh, yeah, that, I mean, that's a good point, but. We, we get to make our own choices. Sure. So he got to say his thing. He got sure. to say his Hollywood BS. Right, right. Uh, which wherever you fall on either line of it, hey, teach their own. Sure. And then they still left us with a laugh. Right. So when, when it was happening, when, when the butterfly was telling us, oh, uh, you know, you got poison in your legs and all this stuff, <laughs> I was like, yeah, and it's a bummer. And I was like, man, this is really bringing it down. And then they... They, they bring it back up. Yeah, they, 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 know, they, they, they figured it, it out. It, was, it, it worked really well. Yeah. So... Yeah, good show. Great show. I'm excited really for good season show. Two. Yeah, it's really good. good show. I think John Cena showed us more about his range and the yeah. things that he's uh, he's capable of as an actor. Um, I thought that they had a, a fantastic uh, cast, and while most of them are going to be around, uh, it sucks that 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 Mern is gone. You know that that the actor who played Mern was he was so good, but I'm thinking he's got much better things coming up. And and not that this isn't a great show, but. If he's gonna be a, if he's gonna be in the MCU, I would always make that jump to the MCU than to stay on a on a popular uh, DC television show. <laughs> um, I see Peacemaker getting a movie, really in a few years. Yeah, Inter- that I would think, be. Interesting. I think they'll probably do maybe two more seasons, and then if it keeps up this trajectory, yeah, with popularity, it will get a movie. Yeah, people love this character. Yeah, and. They love the vigilante peacemaker dynamic. Dude, vigilante you know, is it's, so it's ripe good. for the screen. Dude, he's so funny. Like they found it's so crazy to me because their chemistry is so it's great. good. Like everybody's chemistry is there. One thing that I think they really messed up on, and maybe it's too dark, is you know because we have at the end we have Leota. Um, kind of outing Task Force X, right, saying right, who her right. mom is, Amanda Waller, blah blah blah, and we got to see Viola Davis uh, in great. here. Yeah. Uh, she'd be like, "What the hell?" You know, like, wh- "Why would you do this?" There's a great scene where we see Leota going into her hotel room, and her woman's there. If Deadshot or if uh, somebody oh. else, and they just gather right in front of that Leota, been... that would have put a great bow Boom. on the show. Oh, yeah. I really, oh, yeah. I, I, I think that, that they that they really missed an opportunity. Yeah. Or even if it was just Waller, just like oh, she Waller, kills her daughter, right. her daughter-in-law. To keep the secret, yeah. Or, or no, to just to like show her lesson. lesson, yeah. Because one of my favorite lines in in the Suicide Squad, uh, Gun Suicide Squad movie, was uh, uh, when you have uh, Die Beard being like, you know, that stuff you said about uh, uh, Bloodsport's daughter. You you you're not really gonna hurt her, hurt his kid. And she goes, she says, you have no idea that half of what I would do. Uh, right. And I like I said, I I'm a huge Waller oh, fan. Yeah. I think she she scares me to my core. She scares me more than Fury. Oh, because I believe her more than Fury. Yeah, there's no there's no like snarky attitude about Waller. If you want to see great Waller stuff, just look up a a uh, highlight reel. You know, best Waller moments from Justice League Unlimited. Oh God, dude. Uh, what our, I, what's do you have a favorite? Because I have a favorite. I have a couple. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one. But our, our girl CCH Pounder yes, yes, yes. does the uh, does the voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Fr- yeah. Uh, uh, friend of the show AJ. Uh, he loves him some <laughs> CCH Pounder. Um, Supper time. There's a fantastic line. Like we keep seeing Waller in and out of Justice League Unlimited. Right. Making waves in the shadows. Uh, in the shadows. Finally, she's confronted by the Justice oh, League. This, I think this might be my favorite. And episode. uh and you know, you kind of have Batman threatening her a little bit. Yeah, they're on the f- they're like face to face. And she says, uh she says something to the effect of like, you know, why don't you watch what you're saying, Rich Boy? Yeah. And she like lets it know that she knows who he is yeah. and that it's 
she's not going to let anybody else know, but like maybe she should, the Justice League should give her a little bit of room because right. at this point she's still working for Cadmus. That's exactly. what it is. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. still working. Do you remember the line mm -hmm. verbatim? I can't, I can't. Uh, oh, I, I don't I, know verbatim. Yeah. But, but she calls him rich boy. Yeah, you, see what, you can see Bruce under the mask. Kind yeah. Of this way, like, oh. like, ooh, ooh. She is such a great character. Oh, we, yeah. we have her, um, while I don't care for the retcon as much, it is a Waller thing to do, and it is a Waller thing to do in a cartoon. Sure. Where, spoilers, kids, we find out that Terry McGinnis, the Batman Beyond of the Future, she, she orchestrated, orchestrated not only uh, Terry's dad being killed, but uh, his, his creation, literally. D yeah, some of Bruce's DNA was used to create Terry McGinnis. Right, so they could have their own Batman essentially, like but she, he doesn't get the brain. Yeah, she was, uh, Waller was like, we like we still need a Batman and you were old. Right. So she kind of creates him using some of uh, Bruce's DNA and uh, while Gets that's- the same backstory. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, I, I well, don't know how to feel about it either. Well, what like, eh. the thing that I did love about it was that she hires the Phantasm to kill Terry's that parents. That part is very cool. And if you guys don't remember, the Phantasm is Andrea Beaumont. A uh, she was in the Mask of the Phantasm. That was her first appearance in 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 Anything. any type of Batman stuff. Phantasm is a very underutilized character. Oh yeah. And Andrea and Bruce were romantically involved. And when she finds out what Waller wants to do, she can't. Right. She can't do it. Right. She can't kill the parents because she you know she wouldn't do that. To Bruce, basically. Right, right. Uh, and then years later, Jokers end up killing his dad, or you know, Terry's dad anyway, so right. it still puts him on that path. Sure. Uh, but Peacemaker, so good. I could use a Waller uh, solo. Why not? You Actually, know. I don't know. I think we get enough. Okay. I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't want too much of her, because yeah. like her... Part of the mystique is what keeps her very vital and scary. And I don't want a an origin story on Waller. I want to see either. Waller doing some dirt. Right. That's right, what right. I want. Like I want to see her making some decisions that are, you know, even if it's just like a one hour, you know, special sure. uh, of just like Waller. But that character is so so strong. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. My my favorite Waller line is in uh, Just League Unlimited, and it's uh, they're trying to take back. I think it might be. Clark's cousin is that Supergirl? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And they're trying to decide who's going to take her. And Waller comes up with all her army goons, and then the Justice League behind Batman, yeah. and then Batman go minor bigger. Oh yeah, she <laughs> uh, yeah she so says much. she says she says if you wanted a gunfight, you should have brought uh, bigger guns. And then the Justice League yeah. shows well, up and yeah, he says minor bigger. Yeah, yeah. God, great line. line. Such a solid, solid show. Such a great character. They kind of made her younger in in, in recent iterations, which I think is a is a poor choice. Mm -hmm. um, in the rebirth, I think it might have been the rebirth storyline. Um, they've kind of made her in her like late, maybe her early thirties. Right, which is. I like the experience. Like I love right. that Waller is just like you don't know what she's seen. Like right, you have right, right. no idea, um, and and she'll kill everybody in the room to to get out. Oh, to yeah, to yeah. get you know if she's got the information, that information's getting out. Oh. Um, but Peacemaker, it don't play. Might have been. You're right, man. Might have been my second favorite show, uh, comic book wise of of the last two years. And that's a big hats off to to DC for for them doing getting, it right, getting a little Marvel in there, you know, getting right. a little Marvel. It's, I feel like sometimes some of these Marvel directors or, or people associate they want to do DC properties. Yes, yeah. Like they're kind of like, oh, I mean, I'll do Marvel, but man, I love Suicide mm -hmm. Squad. Yeah. You can tell James Gunn has a real love oh, for these yeah. characters. Yeah, you know, and he really because if you think about it, Guardians very Suicide Squad ish. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, and and better. With his involvement, oh, I mean big time. the Come on. the characters yeah. beforehand were a little bit kind of that that kind of a western yeah, feel to them, sure, but not like not, not like we, this, no, not like what we have. Right. And I think James, I'm I'm excited to see what other superheroes and supervillains he's going to bring to the Peacemaker oh, yeah, uh, yeah. universe because uh, we're here for it, kids. Wait, they, they, they have a lot of cool people they could bring in. Yeah. Why not bring in um, Deathstroke? Finally, use that a little bit. I'm you know I'm down. I'm Give down. Us, uh, I always forget his name. J uh, I always forget that guy's Matt, name. Matt, Matt, Joe, Joe, Meg, Meg, yeah, 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 guy yeah. In the world. yeah. He's hot. so, so hot, so hot, kids. But, uh, yeah, come on, we only saw him in the costume one time. Yeah. Bring him on the show. No, that would no we so saw him cool. twice, because we? we saw him at the end of uh, uh, the fake Justice League, and then oh. we saw him in the, in the, uh, <laughs> In the nightmare scenario, uh, so uh, we oh did. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Yeah, and you know that's the best part of any of those Justice League movies is that nightmare scenario. Kids, why would you send a boy wonder 
<laughs> to do a man's job. I mean, oh, that part was pretty cool. That, that whole end that, part that is my was favorite amazing. part. It was worth watching five hours of Okay, maybe not. I would have been fine if somebody just sent me the clip. I am, me too. Yeah. <laughs> but if you told me I had to sit through all that to see that, I would do it. Uh, it. It was definitely a payoff for my one of my favorite characters and to see some of my other favorite characters. And to get some f- just excellent um, back and forth between Batman and the Joker. Oh, definitely. And to have such a great scene where they're not in the same room. Right. I mean. Right, right, right. Just, I don't know. It is fantastic. It's acting, Gary. Yeah. Acting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kids that's our show if you like what we're doing please hit that subscribe button uh let us know what you think of the show below uh did you guys enjoy peacemaker are you excited for uh the craven the hunter movie uh what was the middle thing we talked about i can't remember now <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, I, it doesn't matter yeah i it, it might not but uh thank you guys for watching eric do you have any uh, final thoughts for us today wrong kid died the wrong kid died kids thank you guys for watching thank you for listening i've been your host roman child i'm still eric icarus and we will catch you <laughs> on the next hat <laughs> on the next <laughs> podcast he got me guys he got me right before <laughs>